After the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade, Africa was still seen as extremely valuable to Europeans for many political, social, and economical reasons. Even though the Industrial Revolution helped Europe to reach its peak, Europeans were still looking for a way to boost their economy. And they thought, well, what better way to do this than to exploit and acquire already claimed territories in the blackest continent there is. In 1885, European leaders scrambled like kids in a candy store to divide Africa at the Berlin Conference. The meeting consisted of 13 European states, the United States of America, and the Ottoman Empire. Basically, everybody and their mama except for Africa. Africa was not invited to their own party. It took them three months to plan to conquer Africa spiritually, physically, and economically. The map used at the meeting showed beautiful Africa and all its rivers, lakes, and even land that no European at the time had ever stepped foot on. When the meeting came to an end, Africa was forced into lines, borders, and limitations. Many African ethnic groups tried to fight back, and rightfully so. When the Africans fought back, the Europeans used force in order to establish political control. In some cases where the Africans resisted, the Europeans deceived and persuaded them into thinking that they would be protecting them from neighboring states that were enemies. What took place at the Berlin Conference not only caused Africans to lose their sovereignty in their own land, it also caused further division and complete crippling of the African continent. This largely affected the African economy, causing war and poverty. The Europeans didn't pour any of the money that they were making from Africa back into Africa. This caused colonies to suffer irreparable damage. Finally, in the 1960s, Africa started to regain their independence. But African politicians kept all the borders that were put in place because they were unsure what the outcome would be after 80 years of division and colonization. Colonial rule cemented the division of the African continent. It is also the reason that Africa is in the place that it's in now. After the Belgium Conference in 1885, Leopold II of Belgium was recognized as the only European to be the sole owner of an African territory. He gained control of land in Africa that was more than eight times the size of Belgium and was the home to over 20 million people. He named this territory the Free State of Congo. He had explorer Henry Morton Stanley deceive the local rulers into signing treaties so that he would be allowed to govern the territory. He promised to bring civilization and Christianity to the people in the area. By the 1890s, the Congo state had become notorious for its cruel treatment to the Congo people. Leopold gutted resources out of the Congo like rubber, copper, diamonds, palm oil, and ivory. He used all these things to boost Belgium's economy, while Africa got nothing. The harvesting of these goods was done using forced labor. And if production requirements were not met, your limbs would be cut off. Men, women, and children were forced to work for absolutely no wages, despite the fact that slavery was abolished. Leopold built an army. This army consisted of unpaid children who were forced to become African soldiers. Leopold also hired European officers to ensure that the soldiers were doing their job. Children were kidnapped and they were forced to work and be trained for war. Ironically, the same hats that Leopold had his army of African children wear are the same hats that have become the signature for the modern day Moors. However, the original Moors did not wear fez hats, they wore turbans. So there has been a huge misconception with people thinking that it was the Moors killing the Congolese people for Leopold, when in fact it was Leopold's forced army. Children were also kidnapped and taken to Belgium to be put on display at the human zoo in Leopold's palace. Children were deprived and women were raped. African people fought back and they refused to cooperate. Leopold then instructed missionaries to go to Africa and use Christianity as a tool to get them under control. The actual letter that Leopold himself wrote to the missionaries is available for all to see. In the letter, he makes them aware that their job is to go to Africa and convince the people that being poor is the way to heaven. In the letter, he states, your principle is never to teach the nation.
to know God, for they know God already. He advises them to disinterest the people from the riches that come from their land, because if they happen to gain an interest in it, they will see them as competition and one day plan to overturn them. He also advised them to evangelize the so they forever stay in submission to the white colonists so that they will never revolt against the restraint. He instructed them to recite every day that happy are those who are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. He told the missionaries to convert them using the whip and to also make sure that they never become rich. He also told the missionaries to require the Africans to pay taxes every Sunday. Leopold then put that money into building huge businesses back in his hometown while Africa stayed underdeveloped. Leopold also told the missionaries to teach the African people to forget their heroes and only worship the white man. Mr. Mukuwani Mukoko, who was born in the Congo in 1915, bought a secondhand Bible from a Belgian priest who forgot to remove the letter from the Bible before he sold it. This is the only reason why we are aware of this letter that he wrote to the missionaries. Africans that converted to Christianity before the arrival of Leopold clearly were not aware of the true purpose of Christianity being supplied to them. Their Japanese counterparts realized what was happening to the Africans with the missionaries, so they ordered the expulsion of the Portuguese and the Spanish missionaries from Japan. They were forcing the Japanese people to become Christian and they were also teaching them to damage all of their temples. They were also trading and stealing Japanese people as slaves. Unfortunately, being that the Africans were first, they easily fell prey to this trick. In 1890, historian and journalist George Washington Williams traveled to the Congo and was disgusted by what he saw. He brought all the exploitation to light. He wrote a letter to Leopold about the suffering of the native inhabitants. Polish-British novelist Joseph Conrad also visited the Congo and brought attention to the mass atrocities that were taking place. He wrote what he saw in his book titled The Heart of Darkness. There was an international outcry that followed. This was led by British journalist Edmund Morell. He ultimately campaigned against Leopold for his harsh treatment to the African people. He used newspapers, books, eyewitness testimonies, as well as pictures of victims from the missionaries to show the horrific happenings that were taking place. As a result, the Congo Reform Association was established in 1904. In 1908, the Belgian government took the Congo from Leopold. They then named it the Belgian Congo. During Leopold's time under ruling the Congo, over 10 million Congolese people were killed. The Belgian government ruled the Congo until it gained its independence in 1960. Before Leopold's death, he was awarded 50 million francs from the Belgian government. Meanwhile, African leaders fought for restitutions for the Congolese people and nothing has come of it. In 2020, Belgium's King Felipe expressed deep regret of the suffering and humiliation of the Congolese people. However, nothing has been done for the Congolese people. African leaders refused to accept that apology. The apology simply was not enough. The Congolese people deserve restitution and reparations. If Belgium was truly apologetic, they would compensate the Congolese people the same way they compensated Leopold for committing mass genocide. The Europeans are clearly still upholding the Leopold mandate of doing everything in your power to avoid the African people getting rich. Statues of Leopold were defaced and revoked in Belgium after the global anti-racism protests that were sparked by the police killing of George Floyd. 